Hi, I'm Bob Tabor, and the good folks at Microsoft Virtual Academy invited me to take on the Herculean task of covering the fundamentals of Microsoft Azure. Weighing in at probably around 100 modules, 100 videos or so before it's all said and done, this will easily be the largest series of courses that I've ever created for them since I've started partnering with Microsoft back in 2004. In this series of courses, you and I are going to work together to wrap our minds around what exactly Microsoft Azure is. We're going, to, we're going to think about how it works, what problems it solves, when to choose a given service offering over another one, and a lot more. And I've used the term series of courses specifically and intentionally because we've actually split up, split up the entirety of this course material into four mini courses, I guess you could say, and they're going to be released as I finish them. So if you don't see the next uh, mini course uh, already available on Microsoft Virtual Academy, don't worry, it's coming. Just check back in a couple of weeks and it should be there. So the course titles are as follows. This particular course is called Microsoft Azure Fundamentals, and then the next course will be called Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Websites, then Virtual Machines, and then the last one should be Storage and Data. So besides the sheer magnitude of the functionality that we're going to need to cover in Microsoft Azure, the largest challenge, I think, is going to be playing catch up and trying to hit a moving target all at the same time. Every day it seems like there's a new blog post or some announcement uh, of some new Microsoft Azure service. There are literally thousands of very talented developers that are applying their skills towards building out Microsoft Azure service offerings. And so for this reason, because of how quickly it's ex expanding and how much ground it covers, getting caught up and staying caught up is going to be vital to your career and vital to my career. Uh, I'm sure you already have some familiarity with Microsoft Azure, right? So in one sentence, if you can, how would you describe Microsoft Azure? Well, a few days ago, my son was home for the weekend from college. He is a sophomore uh, computer science student at Texas A&M University. Howdy. Uh, and we were watching college football sitting on the couch. I had my laptop open. I was cramming as much as I could for this, uh, for this series, frantically reading and watching everything that I could get my hands on. And he asked me, Dad, in one sentence, how would you describe Microsoft Azure? Well, that was a tough question for me to answer at the time. I hadn't yet gotten to that point where I had that elevator pitch in my mind where it could just roll off the tongue. Uh, and so, since I didn't have something concise, I began to describe each of the individual services. I showed them the portal. Uh, I uh, deployed some projects. Uh, I looked over and his eyes were glazing. He had that thousand yard stare. Uh, and that's really the trick with Microsoft Azure. It's massive by every possible measurement and it's difficult to get your hands around it and to really describe it to somebody else and how significant it really is. It's so large that it can be tough to actually explain what it is to somebody else and convey how unbearably cool it all is and, and how it opens up a, a new world of possibilities for developers and for uh, companies. So based on my initial failure at attempting to describe Azure succinctly, here's my new one sentence elevator pitch that I'm gonna try and commit to memory. Here it goes. Microsoft Azure allows you to perform virtually any compute or data storage operation by provisioning and scaling the necessary resources on demand and on a pay-as-you-go basis. And it's the last two parts of that that I really want to, uh, to focus on, the on-demand part and the pay-as-you-go part. I believe that they are important selling propositions to businesses because they save businesses time and money. And I'm going to come back to this idea over and over throughout this course. The Microsoft Virtual Academy team chose the name of this course pretty carefully. Uh, this course is intended to serve as a foundational course in the fundamentals of Microsoft Azure, giving you a comprehensive baseline knowledge upon which you can then build more competence and specialty, perhaps even towards a certification at some point. This course is intended for an experienced technical audience that's new to Microsoft Azure. So in other words, uh, from a conceptual standpoint, you should know something about client-server architecture, common ways to handle a load in server application requests, the value of redundancy, and some ways that you can introduce redundancy into a software system and a hardware system. From a technology perspective, you should have some familiarity with the absolute basics of C-sharp, ASP.NET, 
web APIs, JSON, uh, authentication and authorization, relational databases versus NoSQL databases, uh, how to do stuff, uh, very basic stuff like deploying a web application to a server, basic web server administration tasks. You should know a little bit about PowerShell and a little bit about Active Directory. Now, you definitely will not need to have mastered any or all of those topics, but just some familiarity, even at a very high level, will help you realize the value of a given Microsoft Azure uh, offering as we talk about it. These modules are loosely built upon each other. Having said that, you certainly will, can watch them out of order. You can skip the videos that you're not interested in. You're really not going to miss anything all that crucial. And I designed them this way so that you can refer back to them in, in the future to refresh your memory on a given uh, topic without feeling like you've missed something crucial. So as far as the approach that I'm going to use, there are actually two or three different types of of modules, types of videos in this course or in these courses. Uh, the first type is a how do I style uh, module. In other words, I'm going to discuss step-by-step -step techniques required to perform some task in the Microsoft Azure portal or some other tool like Visual Studio or uh, an FTP client. The second type of video is purely conceptual, and I'm going to explain some high-level concept that's implemented and encapsulated in Microsoft Azure in some service offerings. So good examples of this would include topics like client-server architecture, scaling, load balancing, geo-redundancy, all topics that we're going to discuss conceptually beginning in the very next module. And so these conceptual modules discuss the why behind the how do I. These help build a mental model and leave the implementation details for other modules. The third type is comparison of similar Microsoft Azure service offerings. So sometimes it feels like there's overlap between uh, what you get from this service and what you get from this service. Uh, and that's true. Uh, for example, I can think of at least four or five different ways to perform durable storage with data uh, three different ways that you can host a website and so on. And I hope to compile and simplify all the similar offerings and help you understand the key differences. So these comparison videos help you understand the nuanced distinctions between similar services. And I promise that if you watch this series of courses, you're going to have a comprehensive understanding of the full breadth of capabilities that Microsoft Azure affords your organization or gives you for your own projects. Then you can find other resources to dive deeper into a given technology. Also keep in mind that Microsoft Azure is under heavy development. No matter which learning tool that you wind up using, whether this course or blogs or books or videos, you name it, it's practically obsolete as soon as it's published because things are changing so rapidly. So this presents challenges for both trainers and for learners. However, the constant churn is just the nature of the beast. You have to find a way to plug in and stay on top of it all. So we're going to start in the very next module with some very high level conceptual topics. I think it's important to create that basic framework, the mental model uh, at the very outset. Then as we drill into individual topics, we can fill in the details to that mental model. And at that point, we're going to more easily see how all of the pieces of the puzzle start fitting together. So my goal is to keep your attention over the course of uh, the next mini courses, a hundred different modules or so. I'm sure you're going to be tired of hearing my voice before the end of this, but if you like this learning experience that I put together, then please visit my own personal website at http colon slash slash www.learnvisualstudio.net where I teach beginners the skills they need to get their first software development job building Windows and web apps at the world's best companies as quickly as possible. You can also follow me on Twitter. I don't know, once in a while I find something interesting to say, as the old saying goes, even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. Okay, so here we go. Hope you're on board with me. In the next module, we're going to start with that 50,000 foot overview of the problem domain and how Microsoft Azure solutions fit into that domain, how they help to solve the problems of that problem domain. We'll see you there. Thanks.